I'm gonna see how far you can kick it. I know that old routine, and I'm not Charlie Brown anyway. Hi, I'm Tom Cochran. And I'm Kim Hood. Welcome to PM Magazine. That was really a rather appropriate trick for tonight's show. We're going to go meet Charlie Brown and the rest of the Peanuts gang as we take you to meet their creator, Charles Schultz. We're also going to meet local musician J. Michael Henderson. He had a tremendous accident, but he is making a comeback. And our PM department chef tell shows the right way to cook broccoli. Dr. Jim Moscow looks at a medical advance that can test your baby's vision. And Joyce Gilson looks at pyramid power. Some say it's a secret source of energy. Tonight, we're going to meet a talented young musician with a lot of fans in this area. He is J. Michael Henderson. Now, a couple of years ago, Michael was really rolling along. His career was in high gear, and then it was tragically interrupted. Michael was almost killed in a very serious automobile accident. Aside from interrupting his career, it also had severe effects on his personal life. Today, Michael is making a comeback, and tonight we're going to take you to meet him in his home and in the studio and hear more about his courageous story. time in a long time I'm feeling all right music and expression of feelings have always been a part of J Michael Henderson's life he learned to play when he was nine at 10 he started singing in rock and roll bands Michael grew up in music music I need some of your time to make a few remarks Michael is a very personal artist his lyrics reflect his moods and his life he says he wants to reach people. There is some reason why I'm alive. Uh, I don't know what it is or, or why, but I know that there is a reason. I let my music make it smile. By the time Michael was 25, he was already a veteran. During his career, he had performed with Fleetwood Mac, Firefall, Rod Stewart, Loggins and Messina, Seals and Crofts, and many others. He had drawn rave reviews from New York to Los Angeles. Then tragedy struck. A serious automobile accident caused severe head injuries. For five days, he lay in a coma. Doctors didn't expect him to live. You say that you got problems, and I bet you do. It seemed that fate was cruel. Michael had just performed and produced his first album. But the accident had robbed Michael of his memory of being a musician. I didn't know any of my tunes. I didn't know I was a writer. See, so it was difficult to, to uh, even approach the piano. I didn't know what to play. I see the sun and the moon going by my window. A musician who couldn't play, a singer who couldn't sing, that was the beginning of a two-year ordeal. I thought at first that I was involved in a dream, my own dream. That was the fir my first concept of, of trying to plan, not being able to. But then as it went on so much, I knew that it wasn't a dream. And I thought that uh, it was some kind of spell cast upon me or something. Michael said he had given up being a musician. He thought it was all over. He was lost and bitter. It was total frustration, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just lost. Uh, I felt like I was out into outer space, just drifting away. I couldn't keep in contact with the rest of the world. It was a low in his life. Frustration had overcome him. He felt trapped and cheated. He admits he drank heavily. But through it all, he had one friend to lean on, his dog, Jude. I get most of my inspiration from Jude. She, uh, she never does anything wrong. Never. It has been a long two years since the accident. Michael retreated into his own world, living alone in the woods. Slowly, he relearned the piano and guitar. He attributes his recovery, both emotional and physical, to how he lives, by himself in an old cabin in the woods. I enjoy being in my own little world here, because whenever I need a vacation, all I have to do is go home, take the fun. But it's, it's very inspirational for my writing and for my thinking. 
Thinking is something Michael has done a lot of. I think that I'm better now. It's made me a better person. And I go about doing things uh, as far as dealing with life in a much different way, treatment of other people, things like that. I think it, it, it has um, improved me. I hate to say it, but I think it has. Someone who has seen the changes Michael has gone through is his first manager and longtime friend, Dave Lucas. And I think he's learned that he, uh, he appreciates life a lot more than uh, what he did before. And he's become a more serious individual about life and probably more determined to make it because he's kind of got a second chance. That solo, I'll tell you. Even though Michael feels he still has a long way to go before he is back to where he wants to be, he has just completed his new album, Night People. And Michael is completing his recovery by doing what he likes to do best, writing and singing his music. I want to keep writing and writing and writing. Because what I want to do is reach people with my lyrics as well as my music. All we're singing in the daytime For only just to pass a day All we're singing in the nighttime Passing solo hours away I just want to be happy and I want to make other people happy around me. Are you happy with where you are musically now? Definitely. Feels good to be back. Michael's newest and second album, Night People, has just been released this month, and already he is making plans for a third album. Stay where you are. Kim has the PM Departments when we come back.